What's up YouTube, and today I want to talk about a little show called All In. All In, in case you didn't know, is September 1st in Chicago, Illinois. It is the biggest non-WWE wrestling event in North America since WCW, with an all-star lineup of some of the best wrestlers that are not in WWE today. With All In selling out all 10,000 seats in 29 minutes and 36 seconds. And there's only been one match, and that's Cody Rhodes versus the NWA World Heavyweight Champion Nick Aldis for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And if Cody Rhodes is also successful at best in the world capturing the ROH world title, then both championships are going to be on the line. Now with that, there's a lot of speculation so far of who could actually still be all in. And I went through some of the best talent in independent wrestling right now, and I picked my top five favorites that I personally would like to see get booked for all in. Now, of course, not everyone can be booked for this show. It is one wrestling show, and you can't have 30 matches. That would take way too long. And of course, wrestling has so much good talent. I mean, obviously, we're not going to have the same top five. So in the comments down below, tell me your top five wrestlers you would like to see get put on all in. And here are mine. These are my top five wrestlers that should be booked for all in. Number five, Walter. Now, Walter's someone I didn't know anything about him until this year, but this dude is an absolute beast. He stands at 6'4", 310 pounds. That is huge. And this most definitely has probably been his breakout year in professional wrestling. He's currently the defining internet champion and the current PWG world champion. Now, saying all in is basically like a WrestleMania of independent wrestling. You obviously want some of the biggest stars in wrestling right now. And this most definitely has been his best year so far with a lot of fan support. So he's definitely someone that people want to see wrestle. A couple matches I recommend you check out is Walter versus Fred Yehi of All 90, where he put his Progress Atlas Championship on the line. Also, Walter versus David Starr at Defying Wrestling. And Walter versus Keith Lee at Evolve 90. I believe, and that was for the WWN Championship. Walter, in a sense, is a lot like Keith Lee in his wrestling ability. He's a big guy, but he moves incredible. He does a shotgun drop kick out the corner that's just so amazing because he's getting so much height. He's already 6'4", so he has long legs. That means you gotta jump a little bit higher to get the legs up there. And also, the man's like 300 pounds, so, you know, not everyone 300 pounds can really jump that high. His hilarious look, incredibly painful. It's like getting struck by like an 80-pound baseball bat. And a lot of you guys might know him for his chops where he destroys human flesh. And look at Sammy Guevara. Look, the, the poor man he looks, oh my god, looks like a pit bull got to him. That looks like raw hamburger meat. That's not, uh uh. Uh uh, that's that that hurt. I think for a lot of people like myself who really didn't know anything about Walter, his breakout performance was probably that match against Zack Sabre Jr., where he did capture the PWG World Championship. Also, he hails from Australia and pretty much made his career over in WXW. The guy is about 30 years old and he moves like he's probably like 24. So, all power to you, Walter. I know a lot of people in All In, they would love to see you wrestle. Number four, Matt Riddle. Now, he is just probably one of the purest baby faces ever because everyone just loves the guy. When and if, because I'm assuming he actually will be eventually booked for this show. There's just no way you're gonna have this without Matt Riddle. It's just not possible. He gets probably one of the biggest standing ovation baby face pops no matter where he wrestles. The guy's just extremely likable. If you guys have ever met Matt Riddle before, I have. I know the dude's just just really down to earth. Personally, when I see a lot of MMA fighters that transition to pro wrestling, the wrestling style, it does consist of some MMA stuff. It usually just goes back into like a more basic wrestling move. Out of all the MMA guys that came into wrestling, I think he's actually mastered the perfect style of actually showing like an MMA jiu-jitsu type of style, also being able to not make it look so boring like a bunch of mat wrestling stuff that I know a lot of people aren't gonna really you know, really want to see. Also, he wrestled without shoes. I'm surprised he hasn't broken an ankle yet. I don't wish that upon him, but uh, power to you. You got some strong ankles, man, because like, eventually you can twist an ankle and poof. Man, you, you're gonna be done for a minute. That's gonna hurt. Also, he has like the easiest catchphrase in the world. He's a king of bros. Also, this is where I do a little bit of fantasy booking because he is currently the Evolve Champion. Now, the Evolve Championship really doesn't seem to trade hands too often, so we can assume he might still be champion by then. Where he can put the title on the line against someone he's never faced before, someone who will probably end up losing his championship and not have a title to really wrestle for around all in, maybe. And because Tessa Blanchard is already on this card, I'm assuming that Impact Wrestling talent can be on all in because Pentagon Jr. is also. And that leads me into number three, Austin Aries. I've been picking up this vibe from Austin Aries for like a couple months now, ever since he actually left WWE. Is it just me, or does he like not really connect as well as he used to, like when he was in NXT, or like before he even came to WWE? He doesn't really seem to connect with people as much anymore. I've always loved Austin Aries. He's one of my favorite guys in Ring of Honor when I first found out about a promotion. And he's also one of the main reasons I used to watch TNA so much. He came out with a pink vest. What kind of dude does that? Actually, sitting right over here, I didn't even know I had this on me. You can tell I'm an A1 mark because I actually still have a box version of an Austin Aries Impact Wrestling. Figure. I forgot I had this, but uh, I love you, Austin Aries. You're cool. I think Austin Aries would be a great opponent for Matt Riddle. For one, Matt Riddle is so over as a face. But Austin Aries is currently a heel right now. If you watch him on Impact Wrestling, 
He's very good at it. He's just, he just sounds like such an a-hole. He does a good job. And when you're facing someone like Matt Riddle, who is so over with everyone, because everyone loves Matt Riddle, then when Austin Aries comes out, they are going to boo him. And they are going to boo hard, they are going to boo loud, and Austin Aries can do whatever he wants and make sure that he stays a bad guy and everyone hates him. Now, the fancy part of this match, which maybe wouldn't happen, I don't know how many championships are really going to be on the line at all in. I'm not too sure about the Evolve Championship being on the line against Austin Aries because he is an Impact Wrestling talent. And Evolve does have a working relationship with NXT, which is WWE, so I don't really know if they're really at that point. I'm just a wrestling fan that just wants to see this kind of stuff. Let me have my moment. But if it is possible, I'd like to see Matt Riddle versus Austin Aries for the Vault Championship. The guy's a belt collector. He needs to go to every promotion in the world to try to collect these belts up. Before I get to number two and number one, something that I really do want to see. I don't know if it'd be something backstage that they show on like a big Tron or something, or maybe they actually do it in the ring. But I'd love to see some type of comedy segment between Cole Cabana, for one, he's from Chicago, Impact Wrestling's great up, and if he's not in the WWE, because I know there's rumors about him returning at Money in the Bank, and not too sure about any of that. James Ellsworth. It's pretty much going to be an ultimate comedy segment that I think everyone can just laugh at or maybe chuckle, whatever. It's just something cool to get all these guys on the card so they all have like a big moment. Number two, Kylie Ray. When I talked to Kylie Ray last week, we actually talked about it a little bit, or I tried to talk about it. She didn't really, she didn't give me a full answer, but she didn't say no either. September 1st is coming up in a couple months. It's in Chicago. <laughs> You're from Chicago. I mentioned on YouTube before, it's like if anyone should be a part of this, that's from Chicago. There's only like three or four women's wrestlers actually all in. Yeah. Any possibilities that you're kind of open on the first? Uh, to my knowledge, no, but I would absolutely 100% mm -hmm. love to be a part of that. Tweet this to Cody <laughs> and the Young Bucks and anyone else that's part of All In. Don Callis, all of them. Make me blush, Do it. Man. If you guys still don't know who Kylie Ray is, I probably mentioned her this probably like the fifth time on this channel, and I'm gonna keep doing it until everyone likes her. For one, All In doesn't have that many female talent actually booked for the show, with only four women so far on the show Tessa Blanchard, Chelsea Green, Brandi Rhodes, and who's the last one? Uh, Penelope Ford. Kylie Ray usually wrestles on the Chicago circuit, so for All In to be in her hometown, she will definitely get a huge pop because everyone that's from Chicago that's there. If you guys aren't from Chicago and you're going to this wrestling show, we hear a hometown guy or girl being called out to the ring, you're probably gonna pop for them anyway because you know it's a big moment for them. Like WrestleMania 33, I'm not from Orlando, but I still pop for when Naomi came out because I know she's in her hometown. A little bit of background on her, so also she's the first ever Zello Pro Women's Champion, which is also the first champion to ever be crowned in that promotion, so she's the first champion in Zello Pro Wrestling. Also in her debut match, she also won the Reality of Wrestling Diamonds Championship, which is their women's title. When I say debut match, not for the promotion, like in professional wrestling. Was your first match, like, ever for the ROW Diamonds Championship? Yeah. That you won? First, yeah, my first ever match. That's just something that people should know. You won a championship on your first match. That doesn't happen a lot. She won a big women's championship in her first match of professional wrestling. That's insane. Kind of like the same thing I said for Matt Riddle, Kylie Ray is honestly probably the most purest babyface woman's wrestler out of any person in the industry right now. If you guys watch at least one match, you're gonna like her. Every match I've seen of her, no matter if it's a guy, girl, little boy, little girl, teenager, senior citizen, whatever, everyone's always on their feet when she comes out. She's just one of those people that connects with like all types of people. No doubt in my mind, whichever big company decides to sign her, you guys have a pure baby face on your roster. Do not waste the opportunity to make millions of bucks. And number one, Shane Strickland. Shane Strickland, in my mind, is the hottest thing going in independent wrestling right now. 2017 and 2018 have definitely been the top years for his career, but last year he held a CZW Heavyweight Championship, the Wrestle Circus Heavyweight title. He also was a champion for Defy Wrestling. He's still on Lucha Underground. He's currently one of Trio's champions. And he's also currently the Major League Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. MLW just came back for like the first time in a few years, I believe. I'm not sure exactly how many. If you're not watching, you definitely should because their quality and production and stuff is like, here's the bar. It's been raised up to like the ceiling. Strickland is also the PCW Ultra Lightweight Champion. When the dude comes out to the ring and when he's actually wrestling, he has this type of confidence and swagger that's just something that is just very like What's the word? Like, infatuated. He calls himself the King of Swerve, and Swerve means confidence. I'm sure a lot of you guys can agree the guy can go in the ring. He pretty much can do everything. Is that a stretch? I don't really think it is. If you guys aren't that familiar with him, you should watch his MLW Championship match against Matt Riddle. You should watch his Defy Wrestling match against Leo Rush. You can pretty much type in Shane Strickland versus Click away. You'll find something good. But yeah, guys, this is a video. If you really enjoyed it, comments down below. Tell me your top five favorite independent wrestlers that you want to be booked on All In. There's at least so many people right now that can be booked for this show, that should be booked for this show. Like your Zack Sabre Jr.'s, Will Ospreay's, Jay White, Brian Cage, Jeff Cobb, Jordan Grace. There's so many talented wrestlers right now. Even on top of the guys that are already booked for the show. Again, Pentagon Jr., 
Jay Lethal, Ray Phoenix, the entire Bullet Club, Ray freaking Mysterio, and of course Nick Aldis. But tell me in the comments down below who do you think should be booked for All In? And make sure you like, comment, share, maybe share this with uh, Cody and the Young Bucks. Maybe this might help those five guys I mentioned get booked. I don't I don't know if I have any influence. Who knows? Maybe they're feeling it and they're like, oh yeah, I like what this Mark's saying. We're gonna go with those guys. But yeah, guys, if you really enjoyed, make sure you like, comment, share, or subscribe, turn on notifications, and we out. Spotlight, moonlight, white, you get your moonlight. Shut it look good.